Hello everyone, my name is Reverend Robert Turner and I am the Senior Pastor of St. John Baptist Church in Columbia, Maryland. And I am so excited to welcome everyone to our virtual worship service today. And speaking of today, this is a very special service because it's Fifth Sunday. And every Fifth Sunday, that is our Missions and Community Outreach Sunday. And so you're going to be hearing as we focus uh, all this week on gathering non-perishable items and inviting you to bring them to the church so that we can put together meal kits for needy families in Howard County through the Community Action Council. And so you'll hear a little bit more about that. But today is Missions and Community uh, Outreach Sunday because this is the Sunday where we can celebrate how we can be of service to those in need in our community. Now, won't you go hit the share button and invite a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, just someone in your circle of influence to be a part of our service today. And the reason we want you to invite them is because we don't want to keep God's blessings to ourselves, but we want to share it with somebody else. Now, as you hear the choir or the soloist sing, we invite you to join us and sing along at home. When you hear the worship leader invite or in, you know, welcome our guests, we invite you to go to the chat section and let our guests know how happy we are to have them uh, be a part of our service today. As you hear the worship leader pray, won't you join us in lifting up your prayers, your concerns, your requests, and your thanksgivings to the Lord? And as you hear something that you agree with during the service, won't you uh, hit one of the emojis or go to the chat section and, and just type in how you're feeling, type in amen, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, just uh, type in whatever you're feeling when you hear something that you agree with or when you feel the spirit moving because we want our service to be both interactive and engaging. Now, wherever you are, here's what we want you to do. We want you to turn your space into a sanctified space because we want to turn your house into God's house as we celebrate being in the presence of the Lord together. And so let's get ready for worship. <music>
Hey family, welcome. Welcome to our virtual service this Sunday, fifth Sunday in January. Can you believe it? Ah, this is our community outreach Sunday. Please pay attention to the announcements that will be given to you in the service today as we continue to reach those that are in need. The, the, the fifth Sunday, the kits that they're putting together are magnificent. And you always step up to the plate. So I know you're going to do it once again. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I'm looking at, for, looking at our first time guests. Hi, folks. How you doing? Welcome to St. John Baptist Church. Glad you're here. We know that you'll enjoy your worship experience. Please. Please go see on the screen right now. Please contact us either through our website, www.st. John Baptist Church. Say, I was a guest and I just want to give you my information so we can stay in contact with you. Go ahead and put it in the chat section right now. Whatever you need to do so we can stay in contact. We don't want this to be a one time thing. We want, to, we're in the mutual admiration society. We love you. You love God. God loves us. Come on now. Let's work this thing out. We hope you we hope you'll come back and you're always, always welcome here at St. John Baptist Church. I love you. I love you. I can't wait for you. If you family, it's now time for us to really reflect and step up. Let's continue to do our social distancing, continue to do wash our hands, stay, stay apart as much as we can from others. And everything, check in on each other, care about each other through text, through telephone, and everything. But let's, you know, let's keep our distance. But also, let's get ourselves educated about this vaccine. You know what? I'm tired of being in this space all by myself. I can't wait for my family to come back so we can enjoy worship together. I love you. I love you, and I know we want to. We uh, ah, apart. God has given us this vehicle, this worship, this uh, this vehicle for us to worship online and uh, through uh, Facebook Live and all that other stuff. Yes, great. I love it. But it doesn't substitute, it's a poor substitute for us being together. So let's educate ourselves. Let's get ourselves together. Let's do, let's work together. Let's work together. One-on-one. -on -one. Let's put it together. Put it together, St. John. And let's get to new. Continue to work together so we can come back together so we should worship together. Worship our Lord in spirit and truth. Enjoy your worship service today. I love you. <laughs> Mwah. Hello, SJBC family and friends. We want to welcome you to our online worship experience. Thank you for joining us today. During this time, it is important for us to stay connected. So join us for some of our upcoming events. The Social Justice Ministry invites students in elementary, middle, and high school to participate in the See, Solve, and Share contest. Students will be asked to answer the question, how would I fix a social justice issue at my school? Entries may be essays, visual art, or performance art. Prizes will be awarded at every grade level. The deadline is February 18th, so be sure to check the church website for complete rules and guidelines. Each Saturday before first Sunday, we are offering communion and daily bread pickup in our SJBC parking lot. Stop by the church on Saturday, February 6th from noon until 2 p.m. and pick up your elements to prepare for first Sunday. Stay in your car, wear your mask, and the deacons will pass you your element through your car window. Deacons will also be available for prayer. This is an opportunity to stay connected with your SJBC family as we see one another face to face. So make sure you stop by. Fifth Sunday Missions and Community Outreach Sunday. During this period of pandemic and related challenges, many struggle daily. Won't you join the missions ministry to provide family meal kits by donating items listed on the flyer? We are asking you all to drop off your donations to the church from January 18th through February 7th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Place donations in a designated bin placed at the church main entrance under the awning. If you have questions, please contact Margaret, Merritt, or Peggy Anthony. Courageous Conversation Circles will be held virtually. 
on Tuesday, February 2nd, 9th, 16th, and 23rd from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Make sure you register today at HokoCourageousConversations.com. You can go to our SJBC website to register as well. Click the graphic on the home page. Join us for Bible study. February's Bible study will be led by Reverend Eric Brooks. So join him Monday evenings from February 1st through February 22nd at 7 p.m. for his Bible study theme, Authentic Worship. Make sure you register on Eventbrite today. Members and viewers are invited to wear their favorite sports jersey, on February 7th as we celebrate Team Spirit Sunday. We also ask that after service, post your pictures on social media and use hashtag Team SJBC. On February 10th at 7 p.m., we will have a special guest for Power Hour. Join us as we welcome Reverend Mark Montgomery. So make sure you tune in to watch. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Also, don't forget to visit our SJBC website for more information. Make sure you stay connected. Family, it's our time now to worship the Lord in giving. And today is a special day. It's the first fifth Sunday of 2021. You know, fifth Sundays for us here at St. John is our missions and community outreach Sunday. And our missions ministry is leading us in a partnership with the Community Action Council of Howard County to address hunger here. What a blessed opportunity we have to partner with this agency that we work so closely with as a congregation to be a blessing to our neighbors here in this Howard County community. Listen, I'm reminded today, I want to read for us Ecclesiastes chapter 11. This scripture blesses my soul as it relates to being a blessing. And it says, cast your bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. What that literally says to us is that when we take what God has blessed us with and when we release it and give it to others, that God knows how to let what you release find you when you need it. Wow, we're partnering. You've seen the graphic and the announcement over this month, but I want to show you exactly what we're doing to help us to see the kind of blessing that we're being together. We're buying food kits that are going to be used by individuals in our county to feed themselves and their family. The first kit, you've seen the announcement on the screen, but I want to show you what it looks like. The first kit is fettuccine noodles and chicken and Alfredo sauce. This is kit number one when you purchase those kits. The second kit is tomato soup and mixed vegetables and sweet corn, right? And then the third kit is very simple. It is vegetable broth along with chili and green beans. This is how we're buying the kits. If this that I have, this is the third kit. It's one kit and we're endeavoring as a church family to collect 1,000 kits. Now I have three kits here. It cost me about $14 and some of y'all shop better than I do. So you probably do better than that. And then, so my three out of the 1,000 means we need 997. Many of you have already began to drop those kits off at the church. Thank you so much for what you have done. But today is the fifth Sunday initiative and all week long from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And on Saturday, that's included. We are collecting kits at the front door of the church. I know we're socially distanced, but listen, we said it at the leadership orientation last week, and I want to say to the whole congregation, this year, we are taking our fifth Sunday outreach personally. It is our personal opportunity to let God use us to cast our bread into the water and be a blessing to others. Listen, ma'am and sir, please go ahead right now. You're already multitasking, so do this. Write this on your grocery list. We're going to put the graphic up so you can see what the needs are. And then we want you to go ahead, write it. Remember, as you go to the grocery store this week, 
Pick up a kit, pick up five kits, pick up 10 kits, whatever the Lord can lead you to do, whatever you're able to do. Come on, partner with us. We're being a blessing and God is using us. And what I'm excited about is that God is using our spiritual faith to meet practical needs. I want you to just help me because so many times we pray and ask God to bless us, but I'm not sure that we pray enough to ask God to help us to bless others. But this is our chance. Our prayer request is for God to use me. Come on, somebody help me. If you're one of the ones who knows that God is interested in using you to be a blessing to somebody else, drop it in the comment section. I'm going to wait for you. Say, God, use me. Come on, God, use me to minister to the needs in our community. God, use me not to just get the blessing, but to give the blessing. Come on, God, use me on this fifth Sunday uh, missions and community outreach initiative for our church. That's our prayer today. God use me. Come on, be a blessing this week as you shop, uh, as you buy groceries for your home. Uh, even if you have to make an extra trip, it's going to be worth it because God is using us to minister to needs. That's the first way that we're giving today. It's our fifth Sunday initiative. We're giving to our community. We're collecting these non-perishable items and you're invited to deliver them from today all the way through next Sunday, February 7th. And I know God's going to bless us as a result. He's using us to be a blessing to somebody else. And we also give now. It's our time to honor the Lord in our tithes and our offering. Listen, we're a tithing church. We believe in the principle of the word that if you give to God, God knows how to turn around and give to you. We make God a priority with the things that we possess in the earth because God makes us a priority and continues to bless us exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or think. And so now is our time to present the tithe and offering to the Lord. A tithe is one-tenth of our financial earnings and an offering is extra that we give to God because we love God. Hey, it's Mission Sunday. As you're, as you're purchasing those kits for our missions ministry, stop by. If you're doing push pay or if you're writing a check, let's sow into the work that the missions ministry of St. John Baptist Church is doing. Drop a seed off. I'll be sharing a $25 gift over my tithe today, and I invite you to do 25 or 50 or 100, whatever the Lord has blessed you to sow. Partner with us in our missions ministry. They're doing incredible work locally and abroad and our gifts help them to do that. Let's partner today and believe God. I want to pray God's blessings over our tithe and our offering and I'm believing that God is going to answer our prayer request and to use you and I to be a blessing to somebody else. Come on, let's pray together. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. Thank you for being such a giving God. And in response to the way that you give, we commit to being a giving people. We pray a special blessing over the Fifth Sunday Missions and Community Outreach Initiative meal kits that we will be giving to be a blessing to those in our Howard County community. And we pray a special blessing over the tithe and the offering, Lord, that we are committed to putting you first in our lives. We trust you today. And thank you that your word is true, that when we cast our bread to the water, you know how to bring it back to us, some 10, 20, 100 fold. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing joyfully unto God, joyfully unto God.
Hey family, it's preaching time. I can't wait. This about I can't wait for this part of the service. <laughs> I just can't wait. I've enjoyed the singing. I've enjoyed the, the announcers. I've enjoyed the, the praying. I've enjoyed all the things that we've had so far. But now comes the coup de gras. <laughs> the peace of resistance. <laughs> our pastor. Our pastor is going to bring us a word. Uh, my, my daddy, my, my, my daddy here at St. John Baptist Church. Reverend Magruder say, Lord, drop him down into the well stream of life. <laughs> and when he emerges from a word from you, man, that's what we wanted to do. Drop him down, Lord, in that well stream of life. And when he emerges with a word from you, may it digest into our spirit and our souls so we can be the people that you've called us to be. Thank you, God. So right after the next selection from our sacred arts ministry, the next voice you'll hear will be that of the anointed senior pastor of St. John Baptist Church, the Reverend Dr. Robert Anthony Franklin Turner. Preach, Doc. Jazz fingers. Preach. i 
us, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. I draw. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and light when nights are long and cold. In sadness. You are the laughter that shatters all my fears. Oh, when I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. In the simple things in life, you're the music in the meadows and the streams. The voices of the children, my family and my home, you're the source and finish. Of my highest dreams, oh, 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 Jesus, you're, you're the, the center, center of my joy.
Church, our scripture for today can be found in the New Testament book of Luke, the 17th chapter, and I'll be reading verses 11 through 19. Hear these words from the word of God. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the applying of this, his holy and most righteous word. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, if you will, we ask that you might let the very words of my mouth and the very meditations of all of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Let all the people of the Lord say amen. Church, for a few moments today, we just want to hang these words on the hinges of your mind. Come back to Jesus and give thanks. Come back to Jesus and give thanks. Church, as Jesus was passing through Samaria and Galilee, the word got out that Jesus was there and that he was healing the sick. And so by the time he entered a certain village in Samaria, he was met by 10 leprous men. In fact, church, these 10 leprous men, they were like a fraternity of the fractured. These 10 leprous men, they were like a brotherhood of the bruised. These 10 leprous men, they were like a collection of outcasts. These 10 leprous men, they were like an aggregation of the aggravated. These 10 leprous men, they were like a mass of messed up men. Church, when Jesus entered this certain village, he was met by 10 leprous men. And when they came to this village church, they had just one question on their mind. And the question was, where is the master? Where is the son of David? Where is the Nazarene? Now church, when they met Jesus, I want you to notice, I want you to notice that these 10 lepers had both unity and solidarity. And I know they had unity and solidarity because they were unified in their condition. Because the Bible says that all were lepers. But not only were they unified in their condition, they were also unified in their commitment because they were all determined to see Jesus. And so they were, they were unified in their condition. They were unified in their commitment. And then they were also unified in their cry because together they cried, Jesus have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, notice that without an appointment and without an examination and without a skin graft and without a biopsy, Jesus just casually and yet confidently commanded them to go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, miraculously, 
they were cleansed. In other words, church, on their way to the priest, they looked at their hands and their hands looked new. They looked at their feet and they did too. They started to walk and they had a new walk. They started to talk and they had a new talk because on their way to the priest, suddenly they were cleansed of their leprosy. And I just wonder, is there anybody here who knows what it's like for the Lord to step into your situation and suddenly bless your life. That's why you should never give up on God because when you don't expect it, suddenly. And when you don't need it, suddenly. And when you don't request it, suddenly. And when you don't deserve it, suddenly the Lord will step in and miraculously bless your life. That's why the old folks used to say that he's an on-time God. Yes, he is, because he's never too early and he's never too late. But suddenly he'll step into your situation and he'll bless your life right on time. Is there anybody here who came to give God some praise? Because we serve a God who can suddenly bless your life. Somebody ought to give God some praise today. Because God is able to suddenly turn things around. Well, church, if you keep on reading, if you keep on reading the text, you'll discover that, that, that while these 10 lepers with unity and solidarity, while they were cleansed, only one of them returned to Jesus to give thanks. And when this one healed leper returned, Jesus says, wait a minute, where are the rest of your boys? I thought you guys were inseparable. I thought you, you, you were tight and never left each other's sight. So where are your boys? Church, Church Jesus wanted to know where are the rest of the folk who got healed? Where are the rest of the folk who got blessed? Where are the rest of the folk who got delivered? Where are the rest of the folk who got changed? Where are the rest of the folk who got helped? Where are the rest of the folk who had their lives turned around? Because you're not the only one that got cleansed from having leprosy. So where are your boys? Well, church, I want to invite you today not to focus on the ones who weren't there, but I want you to join me in asking the healed leper who was there, why are you here? We don't know where the nine are, but, but why did you return to give thanks to the Lord? Well, church, as I read, as I read the lines of this text, and as I read in between the lines, I hear this healed leper telling Jesus that I, I came back to give thanks because I have this thing called breakaway thanks. Put, put that in the church, in the chat section, church. Th th this, this leper said, I've got breakaway thanks. See, see when, 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 when the healed leper looked at his hands, he realized that he become cleansed. And when he realized that he had become cleansed, he said that I can't just stand here, but I've got to go back and give thanks to the Lord. See, see this here leper said that I was out there with my boys and they were happy just like me. But for me, it was different because they weren't they weren't happy the same way that I was happy. And it wasn't like I was ashamed to, to give thanks in front of them, but, but it was like they just didn't understand what I was going through. So, so I had to just break away. And I had to come to a place where I could freely give thanks. In other words, church, in other words, this heel leper, he said, I had to tell my boys, look, y'all, you all just go ahead and go see the priest and I'll catch up with you later because 
because I need to be excused for a moment because there's something special that I've got to do right now. Because when I thought about what the Lord had brought me through, I couldn't stand where I was, but I had to break away because I couldn't freely give my thanks where I was with my boys. And church, I don't know about you, but have you ever had to have breakaway thanks? Like when you were on your job, and you just got a promotion and you were sitting there right in front of your boss, but you didn't want to let your boss see that you were about to lose it. So you had to excuse yourself and you had to break away and go into your car and throw up both of your hands and give thanks to the Lord. How about that time, church? How about that time when your rent was due and you didn't have the money to pay your rent and you weren't sure how you were going to pay that rent and you thought you were just about to get evicted, but you got an unexpected check in the mail and you didn't want to cry in front of your children. And so you broke away and you went into your secret closet, which was actually the room with the water closet and you gave thanks to the Lord and church every now and then you got to tell somebody that this is not a Kit Kat break but this is a given thanks break because the old folks used to say that chocolate is good but God is great. Church folk don't know when to shout. Did you hear what I said? I said the old folks used to say that chocolate is good, but God is great. So I just wonder, is there anybody here who wants to take just about 15 seconds and have a breakaway thanks? Can we just take a break right now and thank God for being good and thank God for being great and thank God for being kind and thank God for being loving and thank God for being merciful and thank God for providing and thank God for making a way and thank God for fixing your situation and thank God for turning you around. Would you high five your name? real quick and tell your neighbor neighbor every now and then you've just got to get off by yourself and have breakaway thanks for what the Lord has done for you has the Lord done anything for anybody well if the Lord's done something for you you ought to break away every now and then and give thanks to the Lord and so, church, so, so I believe that this, this one healed leper, he came back to Jesus and said, I had to come back because I have breakaway things. But, but then lastly, church, this, this one healed leper came back to Jesus and he said, Jesus, I came back because I have bonus things. Put that in the chat section, church. Bonus thanks. Because the healed leper said, Jesus, I came back here to thank you for cleansing me. And while I was thanking you for cleansing me, you started blessing me one more time. And you told me to arise and go on my way because my faith had made me well. The, the King James Version said that the Jesus said to arise and go your way because your faith has made you whole, which means, church, that this one healed leper got something that the other nine lepers didn't get because they all got cleansed, but this one healed leper, he got a bonus because he was made whole. And so basically, church, what he's saying is that I came back to thank Jesus for one thing. But while I was thanking him for one thing, God, Jesus, blessed me with something else. And church, isn't that just like God? Because he keeps on blessing us. 
and he keeps on blessing us. And while we are thanking, he keeps on blessing. And that's why we should never just take God for granted because when God keeps on blessing us, that calls for bonus things. And so if you're a disciple, and you've got two fish and five loaves of bread and you end up feeding 5,000 and you've got 12 baskets full of food left over, that calls for bonus things. If you're Hezekiah and the prophet said that you're about to die and you ought to get your house in order, but when you turn your face to the wall, God tells you you got 15 more years and church, that calls for bonus things. If you're David and the Lord anoints your head with oil and your cup actually runs over, well, that calls for bonus things. If you're Job and you've been through a lot, but God gives you a double portion at the end of your suffering, well, that calls for bonus things. If you're Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and when you've been in the fiery furnace, when you come out the furnace, if you don't smell like smoke, that calls for bonus things. Church, if you've got ice cream and cake, that calls for bonus things. If you've got a car and gas, that calls for bonus things. If you've got a roof over your head and if you've got heat in your house, that calls for bonus things. If you can walk and you still got a pair of shoes on your feet, that calls for bonus things. Is there anybody here who can testify that you've gone beyond the necessary things? And you've gone beyond the minimum thanks because God has been good to you. And so you're not on minimum thanks and you're not on necessary thanks, but you're on bonus thanks. And that's why the old folks used to say, how can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved yet you gave your life and you prove yourself to me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and all that I ever hope to be I owe it all to thee where's Dr. Truett when you need her because Dr. Truett likes to say to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things for the great things he has done cause with his blood he has saved me and with his power he has raised me and so to God be the glory for the things he has done is there anybody who came to give God some praise and give God some thanks right now cause he's done so much for you and he's given so much to you that is beyond your expectations and he's blessed you so long and he's blessed you so many times that it's beyond what you deserve and it's beyond what you needed and it's beyond what you asked for and that calls for bonus thanks would you high five your neighbor real quick and tell your neighbor neighbor thank god for the bonus because the more you give thanks the more you've got to thank god for because god has been good to you because he brought us through 2020 and he's brought us through a covid 19 pandemic and he's brought us through a contentious presidential election and he's brought us through crises and storms he's brought us through the valley and he's brought us through danger and he's brought us through difficulty and he can do 
what no other power can do. Won't it do it? Won't it do it? If you believe it, say yeah. If you know it, say yeah. If you're glad about it, then let's give God the glory. And let's give God the honor. And let's give God the praise. And say hallelujah. Praise God for the word we've just heard. We now invite you to join the family of God and to become a member of our church. Scripture describes the process of receiving salvation. First, you must believe that Jesus Christ is God's son and that he died for your sins. Then you confess your sin to God and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord or the leader of your life. Then you can receive Jesus Christ into your heart and your life. For Romans chapter 10 says, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'd like to be saved, pray this prayer with me right now. Dear Lord, I know I am a sinner and I ask for forgiveness. I believe you sent your son, Jesus Christ, who died for my sins and rose from the dead. I trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, and once you're saved, or if you're already saved, you need a Bible-believing, worshiping, and spirit-filled church so you can fellowship with other believers, and we invite you to join us here at St. John Baptist Church. You can click the link in the comment section or visit our church website at www.stjohnbaptistchurch.org and click the Join Our Church link. And our team will contact you with the next steps in the process. Congratulations on making this important decision and welcome to the family here at St. John Baptist Church. Hi, St. John. This is Reverend Lakeisha. I hope you enjoyed that service, and it is now prayer time. While we get ready for our community prayer, I want you to go ahead and type your prayers down in the comment section. Whatever's heavy on your heart today, whatever you're hoping for and having faith for, let's share our prayers with one another in the comment section. And while you do that, I just want to share how excited I am, St. John, about our community outreach project, our meal kits. As you can see behind me, I am getting my meal kits together. My family started working on this today, and we can't wait to drop them off at the church, and I hope you join us in this initiative. All right, St. John, it is now prayer time. The Word of God tells us in the book of Matthew, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Cast your cares upon me. And he goes on to say that he will give us rest because his yoke is easy, St. John. So I don't know what's on your heart today, but we're going to pray about it and take it to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to worship you today. We come to thank you today. We come to say hallelujah, Jesus. We are asking today, oh God, that you would continue to be with the St. John family. Oh God, touch our pastor, Reverend Turner, touch all of the ministerial staff and the deacons and all of our membership. And right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every single comment down in the prayer section today. We pray for every need that has been mentioned, that those needs will be met in the name of Jesus. Oh God, for everyone who is sick or in the hospital, we pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Oh God, everyone who has a financial need, oh God, we pray that that need be met in the name of Jesus. And oh God, everyone who is asking for something of you, oh God, something that only you can
can do. We pray, oh God, that you make a way out of no way, how you always do. We thank you, oh God, that you allow us to come to your throne of grace, to lay down our burdens, oh God. And we lay them down right now in the name of Jesus, trusting and believing, oh God, that you have them in control, that you've already taken care of them. So we say yay and amen for what you're going to do in our lives this week. And if all the saints will say in the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, saints. Don't pick those burdens back up. Get your meal kits in and have a blessed week. Now, church, the old folks used to say, when all God's children get together, what a time, what a time, what a time. And we certainly have had a mighty good time today. Thank you, singers. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, worship participants. And thank you, production team, for letting the Lord use you to be such a blessing in our lives and during this service. And so won't you go to the chat section and just type in one word to let us know how the Spirit touched you, how the Spirit spoke to you, how the service has moved you. We just want to know what your experience has been during our time together in worship today. So go to the chat section and just let us know because we want to share with each other and we want to hear from you. Then don't forget to go to the website and uh, check out all the things that we've got going on this week and that we've got going on this month. You'll also be able to get some information at the end of the service with the slides that just highlight some of the events going on at our church. We don't want you to miss the many of the things that are going on because we've got opportunities for fellowship. We've got opportunities where you can hear and study God's word. We've got opportunities where you can participate in outreach events. We've got um, ministries and programs, virtual ministries and programs for our children, our youth, our teens, our young adults, all the way through our seniors. Because we've, we've got something for everybody. So go to the website, uh, check out the slides at the end of the service, and just let other people know uh, and ask them to join you because we want to be a blessing in your life. Now, as we get ready to close, let me leave you with these parting words. The happiest people are not those that get more, but the happiest people are those who give more. God bless you. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Sunday.